Uh, Closed session, 3rd, 2023. It is 5.34 p.m. Do you have any public comment at this time? The mayor just opened up for public comment. Is there anyone online that would like to make public comment on closed session at this time? I'll take that as a no. Okay. I will close public comment and then we will close the uh, closed session or and go into closed session. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the city manager meeting for October 3rd, 2023. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, everybody. We do have a reportable action to go out on our closed session meeting we did have. Um, the city council did do, um, gave direction and a vote was given to our city attorney uh, to proceed with litigation on um, unpaid uh, the transient tax at a local business. It, the vote was four to zero with um, the motion coming down from Baker, seconded from Keg, and yay from both um, myself and um, Mr. McCoy. So he will move forward with litigation against a local business for unpaid uh, TOT tax. And then we did have um, Councilman Keg recused himself from item 3C on that agenda um, due to conflict of interest. So he did recuse himself. And Councilman D uh, Davis is uh, not with us tonight, so he will be absent. All right. Move on to Item number five, this is special, special, uh, special presentations and our announcement. This time slot is uh, for informational presentations, appointments, and awards to be presented by the city council or to the city council. Mr. Ledbetter? Yeah, we have none this evening, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We'll move on to item number six. This is public comment. Public participation is welcome and invited at all city council meetings. This time is set aside for residents to address the city on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the regular agenda. If your comment concern an item noted on the regular agenda, please address the council when that item is open for public comment. The city requests the persons addressing the city refrain from making personal slanderous, profane, or disruptive remarks. Council members, when recognized by the mayor, may ask clarifying questions of the presenter, but no action may be taken by the city council during public comment section of the meeting. Under the Brown Act, the city council is prohibited from discussing or taking action on any item not listed on the posted agenda. This time is set aside for residents to address city council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the agenda. If your comments concern an item listed under Palmer. public hearing Join the meeting. or new business sections of the agenda, Please address the council when that item is open for public comment. Please speak into the microphone from the podium, the podium electronically adjust up and down to accommodate the speaker. Please state your name for the record prior to providing your comments. Please address the council as a whole. If you have documents to present, please provide a minimum of seven copies. These documents become public record. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Since council is able to take action on items not on the agenda, your matter may be referred to staff for follow-up or be placed on a future agenda. Public comment period is not intended to be a question and answer period for co or conversations with the council or city staff. Do you have any public comment at this time? And I just wanna remind people to um, silence their cell phones for no interruptions. I'm sorry, I forgot to announce that. So public comment, go ahead and come to the microphone. Hello. Here. Good evening. Uh, I'm Mike Griffintini. And uh, I've been given 
I have given historic tours in the greater Wairika area for almost a decade now. Before that, I did it in Reading. I love Come you. Come on, Dylan. Join the meeting. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love history and feel fortunate to live in a history-rich location such as Wairika. Many people that have lived in Siskiyou County for a decade or more have strong memories of a public possession kept in the old county courthouse. Local folks would stop by and see the amazing site, and tourists would add it to their, their Wairika itinerary. Of course, what I'm referring to is Siskiyou County's gold collection. We all know that portions of the collection were stolen and not recovered. However, apparently, a portion still exists and is being kept at a secure location. I'm here to ask the city of Wairika to support the notion of trying to have that gold collection, the part that still remains to be redisplayed. A future display could include information regarding the original efforts to get that gold, including uh, from donations and by purchasing them, how it took trips, how the collection took trips throughout the state to different fairs, which they used to do in those days, and won a lot of awards. And the great gold heist, which Bob Caster right behind me, wrote a book about, and the decision to redisplay the remaining pieces. It all makes for a very interesting story, I believe. Um, there certainly are reasons to be apprehensive about redisplaying the remaining gold. After all, there were two attempts to steal it, one of them being partially successful. On the other hand, given today's technology, is it not possible to display the remaining items safely? Seems like a reasonable question. The question of what to do with the county's remaining gold uh, display is worthy of discussion. When the items were originally donated to the county or purchased, the intent was to hold them in trust for the citizens for their, their enjoyment. Keeping the remaining gold collection in a location where no one can see it does not follow the original plan. It also brings up an important question. If the gold collection cannot be displayed safely, why would the county even keep it? Why wouldn't they sell it? Of course, I am not suggesting that the county get rid of this collection because it remains a part of our important historical legacy. But I am trying to make the point that it is nonsensical to keep the collection hidden. I know that there are questions and logistics that need to be answered if the gold is to be redisplayed. Where would it be housed? What type of security would be used to protect it? Who would pay for the cost? All those are good questions, but I believe the answers exist for each one of those questions. So thank you very much for supporting this notion. If you do, and I, I would uh, ask you all to just think about it and uh, because there will be more and more um, efforts to try to bring this up to the public in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good evening. My name is Jan Osborne. I've been a Wairika resident for 41 years. And I have to tell you, I couldn't quite decide what my attention grabbing line was going to be for this public comment. First, I thought about why Rika is going to the dogs. And then I had to stop and think, there are so many good things going on here. That is not right. So I've settled on losing faith in humanity, one dog owner at a time. I'm here tonight to talk to you about our municipal code as it affects animal control and in particular dogs. Now, just a little biology here. Dogs are in the family Canidae. That family includes wolves, coyotes, jackals, foxes, as well as dogs. They're predators. They are prey driven. Hence, that's why the dog section has so many things, because you're dealing with predators. 
Uh, if it was a mountain lion, we'd have a whole bunch if people were keeping mountain lions. But I, as a resident here, have made so many calls, both to animal control officer when we had one, and YPD dispatcher about dogs off leash, dogs at large in my neighborhood, at Greenhorn Park, at Minor Street Park. And incidentally, I went by to Minor Street Park tonight. There are no pets allowed according to the sign, but you drive by there any time of day and you will see dogs. So this, the code is there as an instruction maybe, or a, a plea or, but it's not being followed and it's not being enforced. Now, I know that since we don't have an animal control officer, the police are handling these things. Well, let me tell you, from my calls, dogs and problems with dogs are very low priority. They have many other things that they're dealing with. And usually I get the response, we have no one available now. So I'm very concerned about this because knowing dogs, I'm not a dog owner now. I had a dog for 13 years and she was wonderful, but she was a dog. She was a predator. If she was not on a leash and a jackrabbit jumped up somewhere, she was gone. She was gone. And she did not answer all the commands that we had trained her, you know, so well. And that's another thing about these prey driven animals, dogs. You can train them but you cannot suppress the prey drive. That's why we have the municipal code with all those things that you have to do if you're an owner. My point is that dog owners are not accepting their responsibilities. Many of them are not, many are, but many are not. So I have three suggestions. I would like the city council to reinstate the position of animal control officer. Or you might change the name to animal owner control officer. Um, I was here a couple of weeks ago when you had a hearing about a man whose dog had bitten people and the dog, the dog ended up, his fate was to be euthanized. And the owner can't have a dog for three years. And I'm saying, well, so what? Who's going to enforce that? Who's going to check to see if that man has a dog and is doing the same bad dog job as he did before? So I suggest that you reinstate an animal control officer and maybe more than one so they can be on duty 24-7. Because in speaking with people as I on my walks in the neighborhood and at Greenhorn, I find that people are saying, no, my neighbors let their dogs out at night. And so they run around and they get in their yard and they dig things up and they chase cats and cause a problem. Second suggestion, because I have talked to the park host at Greenhorn any number of times, whenever I see an off-leash dog, I let him know. And I have also called YPD, as I said, the ACO. The, camp, the park host told me that the park host has no authority to do anything. He can say something to people, but as far as enforcement, no authority. I suggest that the park host be at least be given the authority to get the owner's name of the dog. Quickly, the number the three. Dog license number, excuse me. Quickly, number three, you're at your five minutes. Say it again. Quickly to number three, your suggestion. You're at your five minutes. That's my five minutes up? Yes. Well, then the last one is that at the communications ad hoc committee, you've been talking about communicating to the public. Please communicate the link to the animal, especially the dog section of the municipal code. So and encourage dog owners to read it and to pay attention to it. And also when you do any other things, I think it might be interesting to have just highlight some of these and talk about how many fines have been assessed? Because I have a feeling that not many fines are being assessed because these, a lot of these dogs repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, and thank you. Thank you for your attention and please 
give serious consider consideration to my suggestions. Great. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Uh, Lorenzo Love, uh, continuing with the dog theme, there's a number of backyard breeders in Wairika, uh contributing to the dog overpopulation problem. Most of these people don't have a business license. They're conducting a business selling dogs. They don't have a business license. They don't report sales tax. They don't report income tax to the state federal government. This makes them a criminal in both city, state, and federal laws. I support having an animal control officer, and I suggest one of the uh, responsibilities of the animal control officer should be checking on anyone who is offering a dog for sale in Wairika. Thank you. Thank you, Lorenzo. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Hey there. <laughs> my name's Bob Caster. And uh, actually, I'm, I came here with Mike Griffintini, who talked to you earlier about the gold display. So I just want to kind of reinforce what he said. And uh, I'm only going to be a minute. So Jan, if she needs more time, she can use my time if she needs it. But uh, uh and, and and the goal display is not really the city's bailiwick, it's the county's bailiwick. But uh, whatever you guys can do or what you might be interested in doing to try to reinstate the gold display or what's left of it after it was stolen, you know. I wrote a book about it and it's very interesting for me. So I just wanted to be here and confirm what Mike had to say to you. So thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Don Maria Autry. Um, I, know, I know it takes a few months to get the state to do anything. You know, that can Caltrans. Um, so I'm asking now. <laughs> Going down Highway 3, all of those huge dips that are in the road are going to turn into icicles as soon as we get snow, and then people are going to be wrecking, and it's going to be ugly. It's already ugly, but it's going to be scary. So could we start working now on getting them to even them out and to realize the problem we might have if we actually do ever have snow? Because... I can see that filling up with snow and the plow not being able to get it off the road. That's not going to be good. Thank you. Thanks, Don Marie. Thank you, Don Marie. Any other public comment at this time? All right, I will close public comment. Move on, move on to item number seven. This is the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, oh, I'm sorry. I just have a, I skip something. Nope, you're oh. good. I just have <laughs> one uh one item to pull okay. on consent. So item seven C. Seven C. Uh the surplus lands act item. We would like to pull that. And just since we've had a change in legal representation. Uh, we want to give uh, Andrew Jared the opportunity to review how we are doing Surplus Lands Act. So we want to remove it completely from this agenda. Okay. Is that all? Is that all right with the city council that we remove um, item 7C from the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Amendment of the minutes. I'm sorry, Retta. Amendment of the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And there was also an update to the minutes uh, at the last meeting. We unfortunately listed council member Davis as absent, but he was here. And so those uh, have been updated. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> All right. Okay, so item number seven, this is consent agenda. <clears throat> Sorry. All items listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and non-controversial and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove any item <clears throat> for discussion. 7A, approval of ratification of payments issued from September 11th, 2023 through September 25th, 2023. B, approval of minutes of the regular meeting held September 9th, 2023. D, motion to adopt resolution 23, sorry, 2023 48 authorizing the city manager to award construction contract <clears throat> to Advantage Paving for the South Oregon Street Rehabilitation Project in the amount of $963,992 for base bid and execute related documents. E, motion to adopt. 2023-49 of the City Council of the City of Eureka, State of California, authorizing the filing of an application for the USDA-FS Community Wildfire Defense Grant, USDA-FS-2023-CWDG-CWSF. The recommended City Council action before you is the motion to adopt consent agenda of the City Council of the City of Rarika as presented with the removal items C. What is the this is council? So this is Councilman McCoy. So moved. I have a motion from Councilman McCoy. I'll second it. And a second from uh, Councilman Kay. I'll do roll call. Councilman Kay. Aye. Councilman Baker. Yes. Pro Tim McCoy. Aye. And I will be aye. The motion passes four to zero. All right. We don't have any old business in item number eight. Uh, moving on to number nine, no public hearing um, tonight. Uh, number 10, this is new business. This will be our finance director. This is title approving guidelines for submission of the tabulation of the pro uh, protest uh, connection with rate hearings conducted pursuant to article uh, is that 13D, right? Section six, <laughs> doing good here, of the state of California Constitution. At the September 5th, 2023 City Council meeting, Paul Ruder with Pace Engineering presented the City of Wairika's 2023 Water and Wastewater Utility Rate Study. This evening before you is the resolution requesting adoption of the protest voting procedures for the proposed rate increase. If the procedure the procedures resolution is approved this evening. Rate increase notices will be mailed to all water and wastewater utility customers 45 days prior to the public hearing considering the rate increase. That public hearing is scheduled for November 21st, 2023. Good evening, Emily. Good evening, Council. Yes, before you, I have a resolution um, adopting our uh, procedures for protest vote for the uh, water rate. Uh, sorry, the water and wastewater rate study uh, pursuant to California Constitution Article 13D, Section 6, approved by voters by Proposition 218, prior to imposing a new or increasing an existing property-related fee, such as water and wastewater rates, the city is required to hold a public hearing and mail notice of public hearing to record owner of the property and any tenant who is directly liable for payment of the proposed fee, i.e. customer of record. Uh, we have provided you an example of that notice uh, that would go out tomorrow if approved. And we will also uh, do the uh, public hearing noticing twice instead of just the once uh, prior to the hearing. Uh, we are also uh, building a form that follows the resolution uh, so that customers, if they want to protest, they can fill out said form and have it be good all right thank you do i have any um questions from the city council members no no okay do i have any questions from the public no okay Recommend City Council action before you is the motion to adopt resolution 2023-46 of the City Council of the 
City of Arica approving guidelines for submission and tabulation of purchase and connection, <clears throat> sorry, with rate hearings conducted pursuant to Article 13D, Section 6 of the California Constitution and finding the resolution exempt from CQF. What are the wishes of the council? I'll make the motion. I have the motion from uh, Councilman Baker. Okay. I'll second. Them. And a second from Councilman Cake. I'll do roll call. Councilman Cake? Aye. Councilman Baker? Yes. Pro Tem Councilman McCoy? Aye. And Middleton would be aye. Pas uh, motion passes four to zero. Wow. Moving on to <laughs> item 11 city manager and staff reports. Mr. Ledbetter. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, Wairika City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager for the city of Wairika. So just a real brief report tonight. I did attend the planning commission meeting on 9-2023, uh, the comms ad hoc meeting on the 28th, uh, where it was determined that myself, the city manager, would update the public with a newsletter listing and discussing the many projects happening in the city of Wairika. So I'm currently working on um, finalizing that draft before it would go out in the utility bill. Uh, multiple meetings concerning the proposed new fire hall design and the possibility for paid fire staff were had over the last couple of weeks internally. Um, I have started meeting with past uh, Wairika fire department volunteers. Uh, just to educate them on what the city is currently thinking about doing for a new fire hall and some paid fire staff, as well as gain perspective from the volunteers that lived through the increase of call volume, dwindling volunteers, and then the increased training requirements. So I've met with, uh, I'd say, five at the moment of folks that really were key members of the volunteer unit back in the early 90s. And so, so far, Everybody is very supportive and had already come to the same conclusions that the city had come to. I don't think everybody is in that boat, but I do think that ultimately, if you gave that much effort for really no um, salary, we owe it to those volunteers to communicate with them through this process as we attempt to stand up a new fire hall and possibly some paid fire staff. So I will continue to do that over the, the coming months before we really ramp up education. We had a virtual webmaster meeting on the 28th as we continue to have the virtual webmaster create fillable applications on our website so we can transition away from the PDF applications that are online currently. So you'd be able to go online and you wouldn't be able to advance your business license application without filling in the boxes. And then ultimately you can just press um, complete. That's our goal. Uh, staff also has reviewed the bid from NMR ADG for engineering and design of Ringy, and I have a meeting with them next week to kind of discuss their proposal and um, determine if they'll be following steps. And then I just wanted to make I wanted to make a statement, um, just be something I heard earlier from a member of the public, and um, it's not an easy statement to make, but I'm going to make it anyway but purposely misgendering a trans person that is employed with the city, I will not stand for that again. Francis is a she, and Francis works at Greenhorn Reservoir, and it is completely inappropriate, in my opinion, to misgender somebody purposely, and I'll just leave it at that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. Okay. Council members. Um, Ms. Baker, I'll go to you first. Is that okay? <laughs> She's not writing it down. It's as been I, a while since I've been here. As I turned, I was seeing you writing them all. Maybe not. <laughs> I know, but it seems like it's been forever. So uh, let me see. Uh, the beginning of September, I attended a fundraiser for the sheriff's office, and I understand that there were several thousand dollars raised for the purpose of hiring a grant writer to assist the sheriff's office in obtaining grants for equipment. So that was exciting. That was a really fun evening. Um, the middle of September, I traveled to Omaha, Nebraska. Right. I know that everybody loves to go to Omaha. I mean, I do from now on, I had never been there, but I actually attended a national conference 
And one of the major topics that was discussed um, throughout the weekend was the importance of um, participation in local government. And um, I was just like, we are doing that here. So I wanna thank all of you fellow city council members for uh, stepping up to the plate and being involved in our local government. It, as we know, it's not always an easy job. But beyond that, I also want to thank everybody who attends our city council meetings. Um, and um, let me see. Um, I was not able to attend the uh, communications ad hoc committee meeting last week or the C2C council meeting or C2C meeting um, in Tule Lake. Um, but I was able to meet with our city manager today and the public works director, and we were just discussing, discussing an issue uh, that was brought forward by a concerned citizen. And I felt like we came to a really good resolution about that. So I was happy with that. And that's actually all I have to say. All right. Well, welcome back. I know it seems like we haven't seen you in a while, but it's only was one meeting and then the, the ad hoc or, or ad hoc meeting, but I wasn't the last two that I didn't see you. So I felt it seems like it's been a while. Okay. Uh, um, who wants to go? Councilman Cake? Okay. I'll <laughs> call you the first. Um, or second. It is, yeah. It's been a, not a lot of meetings, just almost meetings of. of um, so we, you know, we keep we keep that going on the pallet shelter. We actually had a lot of discussion on that. Um, I've actually done a lot of research on pallet shelters. I know what heaters go in them. I know what uh, electricity goes into them. I know what sizes they are. <laughs> I've done a lot of research on that now and know what um, how they need to be structured and what the best environment is for them and where they need to go and stuff. And um, anyways, in regards to that, the you know our our property that uh, down in the bottom of Foothill, the, the soil has been removed. So they're going to test on that, the last testing, and make sure everything comes clean. And then hopefully uh, in the future, they can move forward on, on something of our sort. So that's going to be good. Um, we have a COC meeting tomorrow at 1.30, Red Oak Room. Uh, we'll actually be giving some updates on probably the pallet shelters. Um, no, we'll be giving some updates on the actual shelter shelter. That'll be an, there'll be an update on that given out tomorrow. Um, point in time count, I'll be giving some more updates on that. There really isn't much to say on the point in time count other than we are, I, I think I stated it last time, we're not doing an unsheltered count. We're going only going to do a sheltered count this year. Um, and let's see, and we have, I have another PA, PIT meeting at the end of this month too. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. I'll keep it short and sweet since we're ending in a nice, <laughs> nice uh, tone tonight of short and sweet. So oh, rarefied air. <laughs> All right. Councilman Pro Tim McCoy. I'll limit it to three things. First, I want to welcome Don Marie Autry as our newest uh, member of the uh, Planning Commission. We appreciate you being here. If you're always here. We appreciate you being <laughs> sitting on the commission. So thank you for being here. Um, I want to... Um, and right here. Oh, I want to uh, thank Jason and Retta and the entire Public Works City staff for everything that we've had going this summer. We've had tens of millions of dollars worth of projects. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you've done a good job managing staff and letting them do their jobs and encouraging them to do their jobs and pushing them and, you know, helping them when they needed help and letting them go when they were when they were doing it and you saw that everything was going wonderfully. So, and at last but not least, I would like to personally thank YPD for their visibility in the community. I see the officers out a lot. Um, and so I, I, I want you to know that I really appreciate that. I also want you to know that I, and you know what I'm talking about, you guys help so much with homeless and between you chief and um, uh, was it Devlin and uh, Jim, Officer Elliot, you guys helped to make one 22-year-old get out of homelessness and get back to their home. I know it was a long ordeal for all for all of you, but I appreciate that. And finally, uh, Mr. City Manager, you have my support. Uh, if we're going to speak about people, we need to speak about them in the gender in which they um, in which they um, 
identify and it, it's not up to me to as a person to decide what gender somebody is so it's also mm -hmm. the law <laughs> thank you all right that's it all right okay i'll make it quick i think um so i finally attended the communication <laughs> meeting after a couple absences um and you guys got a lot done in those two prior meetings so jason had caught me up on our meetings that we have on Friday is the last meeting, and um, I think it's going to be a great the newsletter that comes out just with um, everything going on is going to be really um, eye-opener. A lot of people don't know what's going on to finally see it on um, the newsletter come out that the city is doing great things, and we're continuing to do great things. Um, so that's very exciting, and with the website changes coming in the future, uh, that's going to be awesome. I think we're moving in the right direction. So I think it's was a great, a great idea that you brought to the forefront to move that forward. So thank you, Councilman Baker. Um, and going back to your conference back in um, Omaha, you said, right? I've never been either. Um, I've never been. So, but yeah, I've always, you know, when people are talking about politics and um whatnot and they're so frustrated with you know what goes on nationally they always say look at your local because it begins with your local government and whether it be with your school board sitting here at your council being on the planning commission this is where it is this is your community and how we move it forward and being involved in any um aspect to make your community better is um awesome and i invite anybody that is out there wanting to do anything they can to volunteer or run for office there's many opportunities um and uh i don't think we get enough people doing it so um, mm -hmm. everybody that steps forward it's a huge commitment but it feels good at the end of the day to hopefully we're making a difference but you do see the difference when you're making the 22 year old kid back to his um, home or um, a town feel better anyway. So um, I enjoy sitting here and just encourage everybody to get involved. Um, I heard I did not have a chance to attend. I was bummed, but just a lot going on uh, with me this weekend. Um, I did not attend the uh, beef and brew, but what I hear, it was a very successful event is what I'm hearing on the street online. I know several people who went and said it was awesome. They're already planning next year, it sounds like. And so that was great to have a first year event have success and already um, talking about how they can improve it and make it bigger and better, which uh, so I heard it was a great success for downtown Marika. So kudos to them. Um, with that said, uh, Everybody be safe and be kind to everybody out there, right? And thank you for coming. Bye bye. What if I've been as successful if it was a tofu and a brew? I don't think so. A pizza brew, tofu and a brew. No, no, you're seeing tofu and tea. Tofu is not. I'd need a brew if I had to eat tofu. Yeah.